Drawing images, circles, and other graphs on the computer screen is very similar to graphing functions on a Cartesian plane, but with one key difference. Instead of the positive directions being right and up, they are right and down. It is as if you are graphing only in the first quadrant, but where the fourth quadrant usually is. Your first program, written as you see it here, will create two objects on your computer screen. First, it will create a window that is 800 pixels wide and 600 tall. The code to complete this task is inside two brackets just below the setup function. Second, within the draw function, the program will draw a line from the point 1010 to the point 500 500. This line will end in the bottom right corner of the window. If you have processing open right now, type this code into a new project and verify that it works. Brackets often form groups of commands. Make note that every command ends with a semicolon. The processing language is quite a forgiving language. You could have written the previous program in any of these ways that you see now. Notice that in these, that there are either no spaces, tabs, and returns, or rather that there are too many awkward white spaces. However, like most written languages, it is best to follow best practices when writing your computer code. For the most part, if you write your code just like you see it in the following slides, then your code will be very readable and easily understood. Let's go back to our previous program where we created a window and drew a line. Now would be a good time for us to practice modifying that program, if you did not pause the earlier video. In just a second, please pause the video and change the coordinates of the line function to be the top left coordinate of the window and the bottom right coordinate. For your next program, you will draw four lines to outline the window. Where do you think you should add new line functions? Well, inside the draw methods group, of course. The code shown will draw two of those edges. Pause the video and add two more lines for the remaining two edges. Changing the color of a line or object is relatively easy in processing. Simply add a stroke command prior to any line or edge drawing commands. In the stroke command, you will need to specify the color in a red, green, blue format. These RGB values should be integer values between 0 and 255. Also notice that one stroke command changes the color of all line commands that follow it. Here are six common colors from your art class. Notice their RGB combinations. How do you think you would make white or black? To make color selection easier, go to the Tools menu at the top of your screen and click on Color Selector. The Color Selector is a great tool for helping you choose a color in addition to showing you the RGB values for that color. Just like the line command, drawing rectangles can be done with just a single line of code. The rect command takes four numbers as input. The first two specify the top left corner of the rectangle. The third number is the rectangle's width, and the last number is its height. Also, just like lines, any stroke command before the rect command will color the rectangle's outline. There are additional features to the rect command that can be activated through rect mode. Try rect mode center. You'll notice that the coordinate in the rect command now represents the center of the rectangle. You can also color the insides of rectangles and other shapes. This is done by using the fill command. Just like stroke, fill takes an RGB set of numbers and fills all shape commands after it with that color. To remove stroke and fill colors, you can use the commands no stroke and no fill. Ellipses, or circles, are coded similarly to rectangles with center mode enabled. The ellipse command takes four numbers as input. The first two are the coordinates of the ellipse's center. 
the third is its width, the fourth its height. There are many other built-in commands or functions to create other shapes, such as points, arcs, and triangles, and you can explore these on your own. Colors in processing can also be made transparent or opaque. This is done by adding a fourth number after the typical RGB values into the stroke or fill commands. The alpha, or transparency value, needs to be an integer from 0 to 255. 0 represents fully transparent, and 255 represents fully opaque. Your last program for this video is to put all of your new commands to use in one. You're going to draw your own version of Zoog. Save this program as Zoog 1.0 and transcribe the code as you see it. It should produce a funny little character like what you see here. Go ahead and make some modifications to the code once you've verified that your code works. Be creative. I think Zoog would appreciate it.